we've got outgoing tide right now. It's the bottom of the outgoing tide. Uh, we maybe got about another hour, hour and a half or so of, of current. So um, we're going to be chasing it quite a bit today. This first spot, this island point right here, what I'm going to do is turn the boat around so that the bow is facing the current. And you can see how the current is just ripping around that point right there. I want to put the bow into the current and cast my bait so when I retrieve it, it's coming back with the current right around the toolies and little ledges that are up there where that current's ripping around. So um, hope for the best, hope for the best. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a bite first thing. This spot is known to kick out the first bites of the day. Everything looks right. The tide is perfect. Time of day is perfect. As I'm going to um, uh, put the trolling motor on spot lock so I can just work this chunk right here. And as you can see, this whole, you know, this whole 100, 150 yards is really fishable. We got toolies, a little shelf right here. And um, these are the kind of spots that I love throwing topwater baits on, especially this time of day. Um, a lot of good things can happen. Let's check it out. I usually start my casts on the outer side of things and work my way in, making sure to cover that whole shelf up there. And if you look up there, it's a it's shallow. Where my bait is right now is probably three, four feet. Um, but these fish could be super tight too. We'll make some tight casts as well. Let's see what happens. There's that little cut right there between that little nub sticking up in the toolies. That's a prime spot. Beautiful morning out here though, huh? Okay, third cast. Close, almost lost that bait. <laughs> Throw on this, this six inch Delta Wood Bomber. This is like a third generation 2015, if I had to guess. Um, a little bit narrower profile than um, kind of the last models that have been produced, but um, this is one of my favorite profiles, one of my favorite colors, Rainbow Trout. Um, works pretty well out here. Kind of going against the current right now, bait-wise that is. Doesn't mean they won't bite, but ideally, again, you want to try to present your bait coming with the current. Right now, I'm just picking at these holes and these pockets in the toolies, hoping that maybe there's a nice striper up behind one of them. Ooh, I just heard something big jump over there. Wow. That was huge, whatever it was. Yeah. Sound like someone falling in the water. Probably a sturgeon. Come on, big blow up. Anyhow, um, hoping for a good resident fish or you know, run into a school of that, that good grade of fish. Seems like every summer we pick off a nice one on the main river here. Um, I think there's, there's just resident fish that are, you know, 15 to 25 pound fish that you can find them. Hopefully they'll bite, but I think they're here, you know, here and there year round, sometimes more than others. But we always seem to get a good one right around this time of year. Hopefully that day will be today, or our summertime 20 pounder. Usually get one or two of those. All you gotta do is come out here and try. You just gotta try to catch fish on top water. It's one of those things that you can easily talk yourself out of because you can go a long, long time between bites. Um, but you know, you go out here and you try to force feed this thing, you know, 40, 50, 80 casts, you know, you might get a couple blow ups and if you're lucky, you might get a good one, but you gotta throw it. 
and you got to stay dedicated to it. It um, requires that kind of commitment. But you know, once you learn that lesson, once you learn that, you can throw a topwater bait all day if you want. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, but the more you throw it, the more you're going to get bit. I'm going to fire in as far as possible and just work it back, trying to get past this little toolie point too. It's kind of place where you get those big blow-ups. Yeah, we're just fishing on, we're on the Sacramento River right now, the main river. And when you think about casting lures out here, dropping the trolling motor, it's really, it's, I would just call them controlled drifts. It's, it's river fishing in essence, focusing on the river's edge and uh, just going along with it. Try not to fight it too much. We're lucky today we don't have a whole bunch of wind. It's a, there's a little bit coming up now, but for summertime, this is really doable. And we're gonna head up river anyway, so the wind will be a, a lot more diminished up there just due to the angle uh, that the river's running and some of the more protected areas we're gonna fish. I'll make one more cast here on this point. Wow, oftentimes it goes like that. It looks insane, but yet no bites. As we always like to say, everything but the fish. We had that this morning. The water's clean, um, the tide is right, perfect amount of current, um, but they, did, they didn't want to go, or they are not here. Trolling motor up and uh, head up river and see if we can't uh, get lucky up there. I think we're going to head up right up toward uh, Minor Slough, Cash Slough, Liberty Island area and catch the last part of the outgoing tide. Let's see what happens. I just throw this little topwater bait. This is a um, a Berkeley Jaywalker. Um, again, kind of caught my eye somewhere, I think Walmart maybe. And uh, a little bit lighter, smaller profile. Um, as you can see, this spot is a really quiet spot. I like to sneak into it. Um, drop a trolling motor kind of early. And just sneak up on it. You'll see as we get closer to this spot how the water's just ripping out of those rocks and those these striper and largemouth. We get largemouth here on occasion too, but they like to hang out right, right up next to those rocks. So the ideal cast is to get tight in those nooks and crannies without getting snagged. That's the the key. Um, that seems to trigger the best bites is when you're just coming out of those rocks and boom, they're right there, they nail it. And this is a spot where um, a lot of times we get first cast fish. So I always try to make sure that those first casts are super accurate and, and the, just the, the perfect position. But as you can see, we got several nooks and crannies where that current is really ripping out of. And those where I'm gonna focus my casts on getting in those pockets and seeing if I can get a, a top water fish this morning. Make sure I'm in easy casting range. Get in there more than enough so I can, don't have to overpower the cast. A little short. But you never know. It could be out here off the rock a little bit too. We get a lot of blow ups out off the rock. When throwing these topwater baits, um, as far as the retrieve and, and the body mechanics, um, a general rule of thumb for me is, is less is more, especially with a light plastic bait like this. I'm really trying to just, my hand is the only thing that's using the, is, that's working this bait. And uh, that's combined with just the right amount of slack in the line. It's a, just, a, that's one of the nuanced elements of it, is having that right amount of slack so that bait goes 
back and forth like this. And of course, you know, there's variations of that. You can tighten it up, pause it, you know, mix up your, your cadence and your tempos. But essentially, these lighter baits are, are a, more of a flick of the wrist kind of thing. As you can see, I'm not doing it hardly anything with the rod. I mean, it's just, it's just a little flick of the wrist, basically. My, you see my forearm, I'm in a 45 degree angle. My elbow's locked. I'm just working the bait with my wrist. It doesn't take much at all. Just little flicks. Again, with that right amount of slack in the line. That's, and that's the nuanced element um, that takes a while to really get on lock to where it's just really natural and you just kind of know what retrieve you're using, turns of the handle versus flicks of the wrist and that right amount, a little bit of slack. Um, that seems to be the ticket to get these baits to work at their best. And you notice I'm just, I'm just popping the rod tip down too when I do this and um, that's a good way to do it. However, these lighter baits too, a lot of times I like to uh, walk the dog by popping it up like this. Seems to get a little bit more side to side action when you pop it upward. Nose kind of pops out a little more. Like the other spot, this spot looks perfect. Ideal, what it looks like when they bite. Uh, we're not getting any love. Maybe those guys already worked it over. This spot, these, these fish will spook out pretty quick. No love on the top water. I'll try a couple more casts and we'll hit it with a fluke and see if anything happens. The Zoom Fluke is a bait that you can throw 12 months out of the year and catch fish. It's, uh, it's one of my uh, most fun and favorite baits to throw. When I need kind of a finesse bait, um, this is definitely the go-to bait. Um, and the thing I love about the Fluke is that, one, it's very natural in presentation. Um, kind of, and this color, too, kind of looks like any uh, bait fish, uh, squaw fish, etc. Good colors, um, natural presentation, and uh, just works really well. Uh, very versatile bait too. Um, as you can see, I'm fishing this weed or uh, weightless with a. This is a, a 5.0 extra wide gap gamakatsu hook, and um, um, I love to fish this thing weedless. I never use weight when I fish this, but it's always a shallow water application. Coolest thing about this bait is its versatility. Um, you can let it sink and pop it and work, you know, uh, uh, more of the water, uh, water column or as I like to do sometimes, kind of work it like a top water bait and just pop it on the surface, let it sink, pop, pop kind of thing. Um, most productive, it seems to me, in the springtime, early spring, catch a lot of fish on it. Um, and I just have this rigged with a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader to 20 pound uh, spectra braid line and it's just a straightforward kit with a, um, a Daiwa Tatula 200. Uh, this is the fast one 7.3 to 1 with a waft iron feather. I think this is a 12 to 20 pound 7 foot 10. Maybe a little bit heavy for fishing this fluke but it's what I had today to tie up so I'm gonna make a few casts. Actually cast pretty nice. You see, I'm working it like a topwater bait. It's like a skittish little bait. And this is a really good bait to throw on this rock wall because as you can see, I have it text posed. I just have the tip buried, okay? So I can throw it right into those rocks and cracks and crevices and uh, not worry too much about getting snagged. Very subtle, very natural. Sometimes that's what it takes to get these fish to bite. 
Lots of followers on this bait too. And speaking of followers, the fluke is always a good follow up bait. If you're getting some, some blow ups and no sticks on the top water baits, man, you throw this thing back there if you have the inclination or someone else on the boat at the ready, fire that thing back there. And a lot of times they'll pick up the fluke uh, and not the top water bait. Perfect cast. Really love the way these things work. Like if you work them right, you get them to go side to side, like walk the dog kind of action. Um, it's a fun way to fish them. You can see I'm just popping it on the surface, rod tip down, and just kind of skipping it along. That's ideal. Light's kind of poor back here too to really capture it. All right, I'm gonna make one more cast. This time I'm gonna let it sink a little bit. Sometimes you let it sink a foot or two, you get a bite. Okay, I've, I've yet to throw this lure. This is the um, Strike King Mega Dog KVD. Big plastic top water bait, it's probably at least six inches long. Just stock right out of the box. It's got the right color. Um, we'll see how it works. And I'm kind of throwing it on a, uh, a rod probably you'd least suspect. This is a, a Phoenix Titan um, slow pitch uh, rod, uh, 20 to 40 pound. This rod is unique in that um, it's the one rod in my quiver I come here and throw topwater baits for Delta Stripers, and I caught a 100-pound yellowfin tuna on this rod. Um, super strong rod, spiral wrapped, just a fun, versatile rod that I love to throw. It just feels great. Uh, from my arm length, the way this rod is designed, it just works out good for my physics and my mechanics. So um, why not? Why not? Short for a topwater rod. Uh, this is a... Uh, Oh, 6'8", six, 6'8", eight, six, eight, so not super short, but casts great. See how this bait works. Probably one of those baits you got to pop with a rod tip up like that to get to really work good. And yes, that is true. Now, as far as this spot goes, this is just an elbow in the, in the river here. And you can see the currents going out, just ripping around this point of the island here. And it's shallow up there, it's two to four feet, as with subtle edge, just contours, a little slope. So we're just kind of drifting along, making some casts to the, there's weeds on this edge here, just trying to get tight to the weeds and uh, hopefully get a fish. This bait works really well when you pop the rod tip up like this. Look at that side to side motion. Nice. Very nice. Be nicer if we get a freaking blow up or a fish. Got this on a just a 30 pound mono liter FG knotted connection to like 50 pound. Uh, Power Pro Max Quattro or some, something like that, yellow. More than enough, more than enough to take these fish on. But again, see with these plastic baits, even these big ones, less is more when you're working these baits, especially these plastic baits. It doesn't require a whole lot of effort. As you can see, I'm just popping the rod tip I'm just using my wrist. This bait works really well. Looked like it would work well. Wind's starting to come up. Might make things a little bit more difficult for us. Remember 
one year during the Rio Vista Bass Derby. We came here in the middle of the day, had an oversized fish, barely. Kind of tweaked me a little bit, but we came up here in the middle of the day, slid in here, throwing top water plugs, and got a nice one. Some followers. That's a fish I'll never forget. Water looks a little dirty, which is weird for minor. Usually we have pretty clear water in here, but it's cloudy. I think we're gonna, we're gonna, while we still have some outgoing tide, we're gonna run up to Liberty Island and see if we can't get a bite up there. Well, we got a little bit of low light and a little bit of current. This is a spot too that isn't always fishable. With the delta breeze, this, this spot gets blown out pretty hard, wind against the current kind of thing, but today it looks really fishable. We're gonna start along the edge here though and see if I uh, can't get a bite. Sticking with the top water baits. Wind is coming up. Wind is definitely coming up, but it's still decent. Decent texture on the water. It's a good summertime spot. We come in here a lot in the summertime. You get, this is one area where you will find some shakers, um, but you'll also find some good fish mixed in with them this time of year as well. You can see right here, we got this little channel between these, this, this little point right here and that line of weeds right there. To me, that's a, a um, good spot to make some casts in. Lots of sign around here. There's birds and um, I've seen bait popping here and there all the way up through Cash Slough. Oh, I just need one bite. Oh, there it is. Little shaker. Yep, little shaker, but you know what? Where there's small ones, there's big ones on occasion. Let's see if we can't get one to bite. Weeds is just a natural, regularly occurring part of it. Clear your baits as soon as possible and just get back out there. Man, can't can't make a cast without picking up weeds. Oh, oh, he's on, he's on. Oh, shoot. Oh. He just got that. <laughs> oh. That's, that's top water fishing for you right there. I want to try to uh, get up into this cut a little more, so I'm going to go with a little heavier bait. I'm going back to the wood bomber and uh, just to get a little bit longer cast and cause a little bit more of a commotion. Uh, let's see if this doesn't work. Working good. Everything's working right right now. Current, wind. Um, but you can see him with this heavy, heavy bait. I'm just. It's just a flick of the wrist, man. It's not much at all. My Again, my elbow's locked, 45 degree angle. Half turn of the handle. This is my basic Delta topwater striper rig um, that I use to throw primarily like five and six inch wood baits. Um, uh, the reel is a Daiwa uh, Coastal. And uh, it's basically just a glorified Tatula 200 size, 7.3 to one gear ratio. And I have 50 pound Daiwa Samurai braid or 55 pound Daiwa Samurai braid um, to a, I think this is a 40, 40 pound um, monofilament leader. And then um, FG knot connection, pretty simple. 20, twi 10, 20 turn FG knot. And that's the basic rig. That's, that's what I use. And this is a uh, Phoenix um, 
uh, M1 series uh, nanotube, 10 to 25 pound, eight foot rod. Uh, it's got uh, fast action and half to three ounce lure rating on it. It's perfect, in my opinion, to, to throw these, these larger wood baits. Um, has just enough tip to fling it out there and more than enough backbone to take any size striper that you're likely to catch out here. So pretty good rig, works well, casts well, and most of all can take the, the best fish that we see out here. Okay, I'm going to walk you through a cast and a retrieve uh, fishing a wood bait. Again, this is a six inch Delta Wood Bomber. Um, as you can see, I got single hooks on there. I like the single hooks. Um, these are BMC extra wide gap. 5.0 in the front, and it's a 2.0 in the back. It's just what I had lying around, so that's what I put on there. And um, you know, again, a 50 pound Spectra to 40 pound mono leader. And when fishing these baits, um, again, I will say less is more, okay? And I want you to take note of my hand position, not only as I work the bait, but also as I cast, okay? These things can cast a country mile and it's just using good casting techniques. If you look at how much line I have off the rod tip, not a lot, maybe six inches. To me, that makes for a more accurate cast, okay? And note my hand position. Note where the trigger is relative to my hand. I have a relatively large hand, so um, more often than not, I have the trigger between my ring finger and my pinky. And then when making a cast, I always grab the back of the butt right here, okay? And I let the rod do most of the work, and that's, you know, something I guess that comes from practice and repetition is letting the rod tip load up and flinging that bait out there. Again, less is more, both in the retrieve and in the cast. So here goes a cast. Ten and two, basically. Let it fling out there. And you look at my hands. If you notice my hands, same position, okay. Elbows locked in a 45, and I'm basically just popping the rod tip and turning. Less is more. That's what gets this bait to, to work properly. Okay, see, it barely even moving. It's just a flick of the wrist. Relative to how much slack is in your line, which is just a little bit to get that bait to go sideways. And just a nice, steady douge, 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 douge. That's what these striper like, is that nice, steady cadence. Maybe stop it every now and pause it every now and then. But that nice, steady, medium, what I call a medium tempo, that, that is to me the best retrieve overall. And there's, you know, some variation. And when the water cools down a bit, um, I basically slow my retrieve down just a little bit and maybe pause it just a little bit more. But right now we got water temps in the 70s. Um, I'm gonna work that medium cadence maybe pause it every now and then, but that to me is what works. Uh, the indications we got this morning, different topwater bait, but just that medium cadence is what uh, got some attention. So again, hand position, grab it right here, just ten into it, let the rod load up and fling it out there. Not a whole lot of strength goes into it, it's more technique. And now you can look at the bait relative to what I just showed you kind of hard to see out there, but it's there. It's going side to side pretty good. And you always want to keep your eye on the bait. That is very important when topwater fishing. Um, you'll see fish swirling up around it and behind it. That's a, that's a fish following your bait. And the key there, in a word, is composure. Okay, you want to stay composed, keep doing whatever it is you were doing to get that fish's attention to come up and react to your bait. Sometimes they'll come back for it, other times they'll just keep swatting and swirling around it and not want to take it. Um, but that's a, you know, I always consider that a good sign. So do you pop the rod tip up or do you pop it down? That is, that is the question. To me, it depends on a lot of things, depends how much wind we got going on, uh, texture of the water, the direction the current's going. Um, in the general terms, when you pop the rod tip up like this, the bait kind of porpoises a little bit. It'll still go side to side, and, and there are times where it goes side to side better by popping the rod tip up. But the general overall bread and butter retrieve is 
kind of popping it down like this, especially these wood baits. They're so buoyant that uh, they lose very little action by popping it down. And more often than not, I'm popping the rod tip down for sure. Those plastic baits, Zara Spooks, baits of that nature, pencil popper, I tend to pop more with the rod tip up. Um, they seem to have just a little bit better action. These wood baits have pretty good action when you pop it and let it porpoise too. Sometimes it gets more side to side, but you know, you just gotta kind of feel it out, whatever the water texture is, whatever the conditions that you're being handed, um, make your adjustments according to the conditions. But as you see, the sun's pretty high right now. It's, uh, it's nine o'clock, I'm still throwing topwater baits. We didn't get our first indication until about a half hour ago, so that's, uh, you know, most people give up after the sun comes up at a certain distance, but I say keep trying. Other baits might be more productive, but if you really want to catch a fish on a topwater bait, you just gotta keep throwing it. And eventually it'll happen. Me, I'm an addict when it comes to topwater baits. I'll throw it one o'clock in the afternoon, doesn't matter. Um, but here's, a, here's actually a good, a good tip I could share with you. Uh, in the springtime and in the fall, or another way to put it is things cool down. And uh, um, you, when it cools down, we get that water in the mid 50s. You can throw topwater baits all day long and, the, and you'll catch fish all day long. If it's overcast conditions, absolutely throw topwater baits all day long. Uh, they'll, they'll eat it. Uh, it's interesting how these fish uh, react during low light and overcast conditions. I will definitely be having a topwater bait in my hand throwing it when those conditions present themselves. Popping the rod tip up, you can see bait's got a lot of side to side motion. So, sun's up pretty high. These fish are pretty negative. Uh, we've just gotten a few blow-ups on the top water bait today, some smaller striper, nicer one hooked up for a sec. Um, but right now, we're on our way back to the ramp. There's just some black bass spots that I like to fish uh, coming through here. And uh, um, the Magnum Fluke we will throw this and uh, see what happens. A bad fish, actually. Oh. oh yeah, nice little chunk, nice little chunk. <laughs> Threw the fluke up in there and it was an instant blow up on this uh, nice black bass. Uh, took the skunk off the boat today. And uh, just another reason why the, the weightless Magnum Fluke is a fun bait to throw, multi-species slayer. All right, let's let this one go. Nice fish though, not bad. Arr. Oh, and just like that, 